There was a civil war Friday night at Pencan Speedway. Speedway Motorcycles Saturday at Champion Speedway. A New York State qualifier in BMX action. And it took true grit to win on Sunday at Pencan Speedway. All that and more on this edition of The Race Report. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of the Race Report. I'm Ron Hills. We begin this week with Friday night racing action from Penn Can Speedway. First to four cylinder action, here's Craig Hawley. In between the corner, Warren gonna get right on the binders. Look at the move he makes off of turn number two. He pinched them all up the back straight away. Sheldon Whitman gonna pinch the 20 of Warren. And meanwhile, all that's happening. Nick Kennedy, Bell keep checking it out. That's the end two of Captain Quick Nick Kennedy. Halfway, eight down, seven remain for Nick Kennedy. Auto turn number two. The end two of Kennedy rides it up the back straight away. Final time down in the turn number three and four. Kennedy slides up. Wilmot Jr. taking a bounce down on the inside on the corner. The wind will go to the end two of Nick Kennedy. Mike Wilmot Jr. comes across second. Sheldon Whitman third, fourth. Josh Wilder with his best career finish. David Fox Jr. In factory stocks, Tommy Grover picked up his first career win. Here again is Craig Hawley. Rubber burning, mud slinging, hold on to your seats. Gary Folks got the green flag in hand, and it is waving, racing. Factory stocks down the front straight away. Craig Decker on the outside line in the turn number one, Josh Towner down low. Off quarter number two, they go drag racing it up the back straight away. Half a car length advantage to the 57 of Decker. Town are going to ride down on the bottom in between quarter number three and four. Three wide behind them from three, four, and five. Leading lap number one, it will be the 57 of Craig Decker. Problems in the back of the pack. Kevin McDonald in car number 27M keeps it going. Fender flapping. Towner and Groover take him down to the south end of the speedway. Groover going to try that bottom group. He's going to work underneath the exit. Towner. Towner slipped up and over the cushion. New race leader out the back straightaway, the 7R, Tommy Groover. On turn number four this time, putting lap number four up in lights on the scoreboard. It is a 7R of Tommy Gruber. 16 down, four to rain for the seven of Tommy Gruber out there flying through the lap traffic into turn number three. 17 down, three remain when they cross the stripe this time for the 7R. Randy Fox is second, Craig Decker third, fourth, Chuck Culbertson, fifth, May Hill getting by the nine of Towner. White flag will be waving this time for the flying welder. One more trip around the 3 8 mile. Pencan Speedway Oval for Tommy Gruber down in the turn number one and two this out end for the final time. Lapped up to position number three. Off the back straight away we go into turn number three and four. Final time checkered flag will be in the air. Picking up his first win of the season, the driver of the 7R, Tommy Gruber. Mike Nago Jr. has been coming on strong in the Crate Sportsman Division. Dusty Martin holds him down in the turn number three. Mike Nago Jr. down on the extreme low side of the speedway. Mike Shane looking to make some racing room right through in position number three. Then it's Gully and Decker. They ride it down to turn number one. The 57 of Dusty Martin shows the way side by side for second. Nagel and Shane right there. Into the inside of quarter number three, they ride it. Mike Shane all the way on the bottom, pushing Mike Nagel Jr. up a little bit higher. But they're chasing the 57 of Dusty Barton out front, showing the way. Barton in that 57 rides it up the back straight away. Into quarter number three and four, he sets the pace. Mike Nagel Jr. second, he takes a look down on the inside. And continues to ride the 57 of Barton Nagel. Making a hold out of the bottom of Barton right there, firing off a turn number two. Up the back stretch they go. Nagel's going to take another look see Down on the bottom. Barton right in the middle of the speedway. It continues to be the 57 of Dusty Barton showing the way, but Mike Nagel Jr. 
right there in the number two spot. Mike Shane third. Fourth is Alex Stanton now up the fourth after coming from the rear. Moose Gully gonna go down inside. Problems in front of him. Mike Shane on the base. Here comes Nagalani inside. 14 in, 11 remain. It's Dusty Martin and Mike Nagel Jr. One in, two, off the back straight away. Side by side in the turn three, they ride. Mike Nagel Jr. down on the extreme bottom. Now Barton up on the outside. Nagel gonna motor ahead in the turn number one. Barton back to the number two spot. New race leader on lap number 15. It's the M7 of Mike Nagel Jr. White flag in the air one more time around the speedway for the M7 of Mike Nagel Jr. Final time on the back straightaway into turn three and four and on Legends Night. The third generation driver will ride up turn number four and pick up the win and the squeak sportsman Mike Nagel Jr. wins it. Dusty Martin is second, Alex Stanton third, Mike Shane fourth, and fifth will go to the M14 of Mike Shane. It was Pappy Bevan's Memorial Night, and Joey Grammas made it three modified wins in a row. That puts an additional $300 bounty on Grammas this Friday night. The highlight of the evening was a North-South Series race for the XL600 Modifieds, and that was full of action. Once again, here's Craig Hawley. Green means go, and they're going down the front straightaway. 28 strong for the Excel 600 Modifieds. In the turn, one and two. Travis Fitcher holds it. Problems in the middle of the pack. Richie Hitzler sideways, one upside down. Several times, hard contact. Red flag on the speedway. The 19 upside down over in turn number two. That is the 19 of Scotty Hillman. A vicious crash over in turn two. Scotty Hillman taking quite a few rolls over in turn number two. As soon as we get information, we'll pass it along to you. So the driver, Scotty Hillman, is alert is feeling the effects afterwards and going to take a ride into the pit area in the back of the Barnes case on hospital. So the important sign is he is alert and is aware of where he is. So Scotty Hillman took a wild ride over in turn number two. Off turn number four, green flag is out. We're racing down the front straightaway, Fitcher and Mudge into turn number one. They ride in between turn number one and two. Fitcher on the outside, Munch on the outside as well. Here comes John Josco. Will he spin Carter 120, right six, right there in the mix. Car around in turn number three. McCrone, he goes around. Hang on in the back of the pack. We get him through one, two, three, four, five cars involved. David McCrone went around. Fitcher shows the way in a turn number one. Second is Josco, but here comes Will Eastman in the 126 wall the wallcom ride. Off to number four, Travis Pitcher slides her up high, wide, and handsome. Driver picked up his first career win earlier this season. Looking to show the Penn Can Speedway around. The North South Combined Series event, Josco was second. Off oh, to number four, they ride it this time. Three laps. Up in lights on the Pepsi scoreboard. Ah, uh, but turn number two, they ride it. Travis Fitcher shows the way. He slides up, opens the door for John Josco. Josco is going to take a look for the inside. But Fitcher going to cruise that outside and try to rim ride it. But John Josco, new race leader, lap number four. Puts Fitcher back to second. Nathan Brinker is third. Will Eastman battling with him in between quarter number one and two. For position number two, they stay side by side. That is Pepe and Adam Mudge, your top five. This time they're one quarter of the way there. Five down, 15 remain in the North South Excel 600cc modified main event. Two laps to go for John Josco. Can he hang on for a North South combined series event for the Excel 600cc modifieds? Josco works it into turn number three. Has a lap car between himself and the Sunoco ride of Nathan Brinker. White flag is out, one three to a mile to go for John Josco. Brinker and Bose, your top three as they ride off corner number two, final time. 
John Josko will set it into turn number three and four. The Sunoco checkered flag is in the air. Picking up the north-south combined race is John Josko. Second will be the Sunoco ride of Nathan Brinker. Third, a hard charge in Aaron Bowes. Fourth is Will Eastman. And fifth, the 27 of Josh Pepe. And here's a look at some of the other racing action around the area, along with a look at this week's Car of the Week from Brush and Pallet Auto Sales in Candor. Thirty years of satisfied customers. That's the proud history of Brush and Pallet Auto in Candor. We have a large selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Here is this week's car of the week. We'll give you a one thousand dollar minimum trade in, and we have financing options to fit your needs, including a first time buyer's program. Think you can't afford it? We think you can. Check us out at brush-pallet.com or visit us in person at five ninety eight Owego Road in Candor, New York. Unicorn Electronics in the Valley Plaza, Johnson City, has the best pricing and selection of audio, video, and computer cables in the area. Don't spend a fortune on that HDMI cable for your new HDTV or Blu-ray player. Unicorn Electronics has quality cables in the lengths you need at a price you can afford. Expanding your network, Unicorn has the patch cables and accessories to make it happen. When you need to connect, think Unicorn Electronics in the Valley Plaza, Johnson City. 98.1 The Hawk. Binghamton's hot new country. Number one for 20 in a row. I'm Blake Shelton. But it sure be cool if you did. Hi, this is Toby Keith. Soldier. Binghamton's hot new country. 98.1 The Hawk. Welcome back to the race report. It's finally here. NASCAR invades Watkins Glen International this weekend. There are still some great seats available. Here's a look at this weekend's schedule. For ticket information, you can call 866-461-RACE. That's 866-461-7223 or log on to theglen.com. And a reminder, you can join us every Monday night at the California Grill, 912 Vestal Parkway East in Vestal, for racing trivia. The trivia starts at 7.30. Check out California Grill's great menu at caligrillny.com. This week's bonus answer is grit. Champion Speedway was in action on Saturday night and some great Speedway motorcycle action. On the microphone is Jason Bonsignor. Nice start by Hawkins. Hawkins and Harmon going at it. Wheel to wheel. Corey Brooks sneaks it in there. Look at Corey Brooks go. Corey Brooks takes over second. Keith Hawkins drifts wide. One lap. Great race. Keith Hawkins for the win. What a great race. Come on, everybody. Let them know you like that. That was some good speedway. Division two main event. And it's Johnny Shag out front with the Pitbull in hot pursuit. Pitbull wants revenge in this one. Here comes Mason Agley though. Can Mason Agley get him for second? It's all Johnny Shag's race right now. Keep it going, Johnny. Don't look over that shoulder. Chris Neely says, you're not going to get second in this one, kid. He's shutting the door on him.
Johnny Shea's got the checkered flag in eyesight. Your New York State Division II Speedway champion, Johnny Shea, everybody. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's at a middle. Oh, Casey Donholt and Jeremy Parsons come together. It's Casey Don Hall with Adam Middle in pursuit. Casey Don Hall. Red light is out. Red light is out. All right, Adam Middle in one. Thankfully, he's okay from that bang. Dave Oakton in two. Jeremy Parsons in three. Casey Donholt and Keith Hawkins decided not to ride. It's Middle and Parsons. Middle and Parsons going shoulder to shoulder here. Parsons in middle, putting on a good show here. Dave Oakton in third. We got a great race going on here. White flag is out, one lap to go. Jeremy Parsons around the outside of middle. Can he get it? It's Parsons for the win. Adam Middle takes second, Dave Oakton third. Great race. Welcome back to the race report. Champions BMX track was in action on Sunday afternoon with a New York State qualifier. James Eggleston has more. Hi, Ron. James Eggleston here. I'm at Champion Speedway BMX for the New York State qualifiers. Today is our state qualifier for the, the state championship, which will happen at the end of the year. And uh, where's that state championship going to take place? The cha state championship will happen at Shoreham BMX in Long Island. This is one of, every racer has to have four qualifiers, so this is one of the four that they will have. There's 11 tracks in New York. Each, each track will have a state qualifier, and each rider has to have. We had a unique experience here this weekend. They raced at Grippen last night. Yes. And... Uh, and they're racing here tonight because of the rains of last week. So killing two birds with one stone. And uh, how many riders do you have here today? Um, we had 45 motos, which I, I haven't got a rider, rider count yet. Um, it's got to be over, it's over 100 riders. In there. So, yeah, there are a lot of riders here, and uh, the Team USA is here also. Uh, and it's a very festive, you know, atmosphere up here. It's a very family-orientated atmosphere up here. And why don't you tell us about uh, more of the schedule, what's going to happen the rest of the year. Our normal race schedule is on Sundays. You can check our schedule for practices or race times at, at our Facebook page at Champion, Champion BMX. Or you can look at our USA BMX site, which is championbmx.com. And that's, that's their social stuff. Uh, any sponsors you want to give a shout-out to? Lawman Bicycles. Kind of tires. I'm standing here with Kylie Niederberger, and Kylie, as you can tell, has a very nice uniform on with USA. Why don't you tell me how you got that uniform, Kylie? Uh, I made it to Worlds for BMX. So you represented the U.S. United States in the Worlds, and where was this held? South Carolina. South Carolina, and when? This week, I guess. So you've been on the road. You've been out racing, you've been on the road, and you're here now. You're from Maryland. So you've been traveling around quite a bit. How did you do in those races? I didn't make it out of quarters. So you didn't make it into the finals is what you're saying. And who, who ended up winning it? Did an American win it all? Yes. And where was, she, where was that person from? California. Boy or girl? Girl. Girl power. All right. So how are you doing out here today? Good. Good. Okay. And what, uh, what, what division are you racing in? What do you mean? 
well, what class are you racing in? Ten girls. Ten girls, and and there are a lot of girls here. Yeah. Yes, I noticed that there are a lot of girls here. So, what are your plans in the future? Are you going to stay with BMX? Or are you going to jump on a motor and get riding motorcycles? I'm going to stick with BMX. Stick with BMX now, and, how, and you're ten years old. Okay, and so no motor racing in the future for you? No. Well, that's good for you. Kylie, good luck to you today, and thank you for representing our country in the finals and in the, in the, the world uh, BMX down in South Carolina. Thank you. Parker Tramposh, who is, how old are you again? Eight. He was eight years old and also represented the United States in, in the uh, World Games down there in South Carolina. How did you do down there? Uh, oh, well, I had... Um, a bad gate in the second moto, and it got fifth, so. So a bad gate led to fifth, but that's not a bad showing? Um, I guess so. So, uh, how many kids were in your division? Uh, 90-something. 90, 90, and you came in fifth? Well, I didn't make the main. Oh, you didn't make the mains, but you, you were still there, you participated, and that's great, and you represented our country. Uh, what are your plans in racing? Do you plan on moving up and maybe moving to a motor someday, or are you going to keep it with BMX? Keep it with BMX. You're going to keep it with BMX. He's, he's, he's true to the soul. And how are you doing out here today? Good. Doing good? And did you already go out and qualify? Okay, so you're going to go out and race today. You haven't done any motos yet? No? Okay. No. And uh, how many guys are in your division in, up here today? Uh, I don't, don't really know. You don't know. He's not with the specifics. He's just into riding right now. So, well, good luck to you today, Parker, and thank you for representing our country. Thanks. Okay, it's a hot one out here, Ron. Back to you. More action ahead when the race report continues. Thirty years of satisfied customers. That's the proud history of Brush and Pallet Auto in Candor. We have a large selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Here is this week's car of the week. We'll give you a one thousand dollar minimum trade in, and we have financing options to fit your needs, including a first time buyer's program. Think you can't afford it? We think you can. Check us out at brush-pallet.com or visit us in person at five ninety eight Owego Road in Candor, New York. For three generations, we've been building world-class American performance. Like the new Edelbrock Power Package Top End Kit, based on Edelbrock's powerful RPM crate engines. Each kit includes aluminum heads and intake, cam and lifters, gaskets, and hardware to build your own 400-plus horsepower Chevy small block. For three generations, it's pure American performance from the leader. Call now for your free Edelbrock catalog. Edelbrock makes them right, right here in the USA. Welcome back to the race report. The Grit Series invaded Penn Can Speedway on Sunday afternoon. Great racing action. First to Factory Stocks, where Tommy Groover doubled up on the weekend. At the restart line, Groover will fire. Towner's right with him, side by side, down to the front straightaway. They take it down in a one and two. Tommy Groover will lead the charge. Here comes Harry Marvin the third. The Varmin is on the move in the 57 car. Josh Towner right underneath the 7R. Oh, we got Chris Groover and Jim Sykes around in a knot. And that one is going to stop the 76 car. One more trip around the speedway for the final time. Down to the back straightaway. Looking to pick up two wins on the weekend here at Penn Can Speedway. Driving the Zimmer Logging Red Barrel Carburetors. Car number 7R, Tommy Groover, is your main event winner. Followed by Josh Towner and Jim Sykes rounding out the top three. A local driver picked up his first XL600 win at Penn Can Speedway. Boyd fires it down in there in turn number three and four. He pulls almost even terms. The white flag is out. One more trip around the speedway. Bailey Boyd puts it in around the cushion. Right there on the top, tries to draw a bead. He closes a little bit as they hit three and four. Young Camden maybe out of Susquehanna, Pennsylvania will pick up the main event. Bailey Boyd for two, Corey England for three, Josh Mudge for four, and a 77 junior of Kyle England. The 602 wingless sprints were on hand and boy did they put on a show. 
The headline race was the Grit Sportsman Race, the 602 Crate Division, and what a battle between Nick Nye and Tom Collins. Look at Tom Collins right underneath Nick Nye, side by side for the race lead as they hit turns one and two. Nick Nye again on the outside. Tom Collins on the bottom. He pulls even terms with him down to the back straightaway. Tom Collins looking to grab the race lead away from Nick Nye. In through three and four, off of four, this time at the line. That's still Nick Nye, but Collins is there. Meanwhile, they're racing side by side. Mike Nagel Jr. says, keep on doing that, because I'm coming. Fifteen laps down, fifteen more to go. The lab car, car number 50, right in Nick Nye's line. Nick Nye will shut him off, he'll go to the bottom. That could have been a blessing in disguise for Nick Nye. Tommy Collins in a 713, puts pressure on Nick Nye. They're side by side again. This time Collins has got a nose ahead down the back straightaway. They run down into turns three and four. Nick Nye around the outside, Tommy Collins on the bottom. Still Nick Nye at the line. What a job by Nick Nye in car number six at end. Tommy Collins has tried him on the inside, the outside, every which way. Can't seem to get by the six and N. Here comes Mike Nagel Jr. He wants to throw his name in the mix. He picked up the win right here Friday night at Pencan Speedway. You know he would love to double dip on the weekend. But Nick Nye and Tommy Collins are in the midst of open wheel warfare right now. 22 in, eight more trips around the speedway. Tommy Collins is there. He pulls even terms. He's ahead of them down to the back straightaway. They race into three and four. Side by side without a spark fly. And this is 602 Crate Sportsman racing at its finest race fans. In the middle of one and two, Collins now is underneath him. Nick Nye still has a little bit of advantage. They were all uh, pick and roll with a lap car. Down in one and two, and Nick Nye has lost the lead. And that's all we have time for this week. For everyone here at the Race Report, thanks for watching. Until next week, I'm Ron Hills, and I'll see you at the races. Pat Jordan will go from fifth to third in car number 25. This time by, the white silk is going to be in the air for the 713 of Tommy Collins. One more trip around the speedway. Can Collins hold on? One more trip around for the final time. Into three, off of four. Ladies and gentlemen, off of corner number four, the driver of the J&J &J Racing Entry. 713, Tom Collins is your winner. Nick Nye for two, Mike Nagel Jr. for rounding out your top three.